Good afternoon, I am Venice Bautista. Now before the year ends, let's relive 2021 in this special year-end report brought to you by Tribune News on Q. Vaccines, votes, and viral stories, the year that was 2021. The world thought that no other year could be 2020's twists and turns, but 2021 proved to be a worthy sequel. As the Philippines ushers in the third pandemic year, with the national and local elections around the corner, let's take a look at the biggest events of 2021, which made us think these were part of a Netflix series. Let's hear the timeline of events from our news correspondent, Michelle Gilyang. The country welcomed 2021 with the controversial death of Christine De Sera, a 23-year-old flight attendant. Gaining widespread media attention, her case served as a reminder on the importance of conducting scientific and evidence-based investigations and avoiding hasty generalizations. The Philippines received its first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines courtesy of China's Sinovac just before February ended. Beijing shipped 600,000 doses of anti-coronavirus shots, the first tranche of its donation to the country. Last March, the government inoculated its first legally acquired COVID-19 vaccine to a medical frontliner, ending the country's wait for a virus shot. Dr. Gerardo Gapligaspi, director of the Philippine General Hospital, is the first recipient of the coronavirus vaccine. In April, a week after the reimposition of the strictest lockdown classification in Metro Manila and nearby provinces, community pantries emerge, where donated food packs are made available for the poor. The initiative first popped along Maginhawa Street in Quezon City and was later replicated in the other areas across the country as a means of helping the poor cope with the ongoing pandemic. The nation commemorated the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines, which remains a religious nation, even as the pandemic forced churches to go virtual. The year-long celebration formally began on April 4, 2021, and will end on April 22, 2022. In June, the nation mourned the death of former President Benigno Noynoy Aquino III. Aquino, who rose to power on the legacy of his democracy icon parents, died of renal failure at age 61. Tribune News on Q will be back after these short reminders. Si Harry Roque, ang pinakamagaling spokesman, kaya inggit sa kanya ang oposisyon. Tama lang na ipinaglaban ko ang balik trabaho para bumalik ang kita ng mga nagtatrabaho at naghahanap buhay. Hindi pwedeng magutom ang pamilya. Dapat lang po ingat buhay para sa hanap buhay. Basta trabaho, kita at hanap buhay ang nakataya. Nasa harap niyo po ako. Ibigay natin ang tudong suporta kay Harry. We're back on Tribune News on Q's special year-end report. Now in July, a tragedy took place at the Holo Airport. And for the details, let's continue Michelle Gilyang's report. Considered as the deadliest aviation accident in the history of the armed forces, an Air Force plane carrying 92 passengers overshot the runway while landing at the Holo Airport last July, leaving 53 people dead. President Rodrigo Duterte confirmed the order of Lapu-Lapu with the rank of Kalasag to the fallen soldiers, who were supposed to bolster the battalions deployed in Sulu to fight the Abu Sayyaf. B-medaled athlete Heidi Diaz lifted the entire Philippines to a sheer movement of pride with her Olympic gold victory, ending the nation's 92-year wait. Diaz led the Philippine team that brought home four medals, which officials say was the country's best Olympic showing so far. In September, the country saw record-breaking COVID-19 daily numbers, which experts attributed to the deadly Delta variant. Coronavirus infections prompted the government to reimpose another two-week lockdown. For months, senators went after executives of the government supplier of the COVID-19 year, formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation. The firm bagged billions of pesos in contracts to supply the government with face shields and other supplies despite having minimum capital. Two executives of the firm remain in jail for their refusal to cooperate with the ongoing inquiry. 
Also in September, the country crowned its first Miss Universe Queen, who is openly a member of the LGBTQIA community. Beatrice Luigi Gomez, 26, represented the country in this year's Miss Universe edition and extended the country's 12-year semi-final streak with her top five finish. Ferdinand Bombong Marcos Jr. and Sara Duterte Carpio emerged as the tandem to beat after bizarre political episodes that have unfolded during the deadline for filing of candidacies and substitutions. From the opposition's failed unification plan to substitution drama, the chaos involved the president himself who flip-flopped on his plan to pursue a Senate seat. Tribune News on Q will be back. Stay with us. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my bad condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation. With vaccination. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Ngayong lunes sa The Athletes Tribune Season 2. Pakinggan ang mga inspiring stories. Wala akong shooting, wala akong jump shot, wala akong three points. Pero dahil sa, sa puso ko, sa hard work ko, kumukuha ko ng rebound, you know, uh, binidepensa ako. So sa akin, binigay ko naman talaga ako. I mean, retired Philippine basketball star, time PBA champion, two-time PBA Finals MVP, at 2011 PBA All-Star Game MVP, Mark Pingris. January 3, Monday at 7 p.m. So all new season ng The Athletes Tribune. You are still watching Tribune News on Q's special year-end report. Now let us continue where Michelle Guillang left off, moving on to the Ayungin incident. In November, three Chinese Coast Guard vessels blocked and fired water cannons on two Philippine boats en route to a Union Shoal to transport food supplies to Filipino soldiers on board BRP Shera Madre. No one was hurt in the incident, but the delivery of supplies to the Filipino troops had to be aborted. Philippine supply boats resumed their mission the following week. The COVID-19 variant Omicron has made its way to the Philippines just before Christmas, posing a threat to hopes of ending the pandemic in 2022. So far, the Philippines has reported at least four cases of the new variant that was first detected in South Africa. Typhoon Odette ravaged many parts of Visayas and Mindanao just a week before Christmas. Several organizations have launched relief drives to help victims of the monster storm, the worst storm to hit the Philippines this year. Meanwhile, for our business story, none is heard yet from the president who had banned the polluted noisemakers even before his name rose to national prominence. Meanwhile, retailers in Bukawe, Bulacan are seeking the public's understanding of their need to jack up the prices of fireworks and pyrotechnics. They said it's their only chance to recoup their lost earnings. Elizabeth Mendoza, the owner of Pyrocast Store, admitted that the prices of firecrackers have gone twofold. She blamed the astronomical cost of products passed on by the manufacturer. 
And now for our showbiz news and our final story tonight, the vinyl and cassette sales soared again in 2021. Let's hear more of the details from our showbiz correspondent, Kim Sancha. Magandang araw mga katibo, this is Kim Sancha. Welcome to another episode of Chibin Extra. Sa unang pagkakataon mula noong 1991, tumaas ng 5 milyon ang benta ng vinyl sa UK dahil sa mga album sina Adele, Abba at Ed Sheeran. Halos isang kapat ng mga album na binili ng taon o katumbas ng 23% ay nasa vinyl kung saan ang Abba's Voyage ang may pinakamalaking na benta. Minarkahan nito ang ika labing apat na magkakasunod na taon ng paglago ng naturang format na tumaas ng 8% ang benta noong 2020. Samantala, patuloy na bumaba ang bentahan ng mga CD kung saan labing apat milyong kopya ang pinakamababang bilang mula noong 1988, anin na taon matapos ipakilala ang format sa UK. Sa huli, ang muling pagbabalik ni Adele ay naungusan ng ABBA matapos i-anunsyo noong Setyembre ang kanilang bagong album sa higit sa apat na pung taon. Pinamagatang Voyage, pumalo ng 29,891 ang nabentang kopya, isang linggo lamang ang release. Nasundan pa ito ng malawak na pre-order na kampanya na nagbigay sa mga tagahanga ng maagang access sa mga tiket para sa virtual concert ng Swedish Music Icon Group sa susunod na taon. Kumakatawa naman sa isang maliit na bahagi ng merkado ng musika, ang bahagyang pagtaas ng benta ng kaset sa ikasyam na magkakasunod na taon. Ang manghuling numero para sa 2021 ay nagpapakita ng humigit kumulang 190,000 tape na nabili sa nakalipas na labing dalawang buwan, matapos ang humigit kumulang 20% kada taon. Tinaguran itong pinakamatagumpay na taon mula noong 2003 nang ang Now 54 ang biggest selling cassette noong taong iyon. Ang top 5 best selling vinyl albums ng 2021 ay ang Voyage ng ABBA, 13 ni Adele, Rumors ng Fleetwood Mac, Equals ni Ed Sheeran at Back to Black ni Amy Winehouse. Habang ang top 5 best selling cassettes ng 2021 ay Sorry ni Olivia Rodrigo, We're All in This Together ni Dave, Chemtrails Over the Country Club ni Lana Del Rey, Greatest Hits ng Queen, at Music of the Spears ng Coldplay. Para sa balitang musika, local at international, tumutok lang mga katibu sa Tribune Extra. Hanggang sa muli! Thank you, Kim Sancha. And that wraps up the stories for this year. But before we go, we would like to thank the following, the SM Store, Arada Center, Department of Tourism, MG Motors, Kina Motors, Security Bank, and Overseas Community Affairs Council member Alan Lin of Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q's special year and report. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good evening and Happy New Year, Katribu. Thank you.